think I'd experience much pushback if I were to say that the essence of experiencing a video game lies in the playing of it. It's the unique selling point of the medium, after all, and as an interactive narrative enthusiast it's always been the intersection between gameplay and story that I find most interesting. But what about when I can't enjoy a story because it's not my kind of game? This is something nobody can help, there are certain genres of gameplay that, through no fault of either me or the gameplay in question, just doesn't gel with my personal bespoke brain chemistry. Real-time strategy, one-on-one -on -one fighters, management games, online multiplayer, they just don't spark my nads. And the real tragedy is that these games could put all the effort in the world into their characters and lore, it could be specifically geared for me even, like a story about an 18th century sailing ship crewed entirely by characters from television science fiction of the 80s and 90s, but I'd never be able to appreciate it because it's in a kind of game that doesn't appeal. It's birthday cake for someone else's party, and I lament any cake in my vicinity that doesn't end up in my mouth. But we live in a wonderful age of wikis, podcasts and YouTube clips where it can be possible to appreciate the trimmings and superficial trappings of a game without ever needing to actually play the fucking things. Obviously it's not the full experience, but it's the most someone like me could ever appreciate, so I'd like to take a moment to detail a short list of games that I really like and don't play. Team Fortress 2 I wasn't always so down on online multiplayer. Back in the 90s and very early 2000s I used to play Team Fortress Classic when it was a Half-Life mod, probably because online gaming was a much lower pressure environment back then. I'd join a public server and maybe I'd fart around helping capture the flag or maybe I'd stay in the spawn arguing about politics on text chat and drawing willies on the wall in bullet holes. When Team Fortress 2 came out I played it for a while. I was a medic main, cause that was the easiest job. You find someone who seems to know what they're doing and point at them until one or both of you die. But then Valve started adding all those alternative weapons and achievement packs, and the first class to benefit was of course the medic, so I joined a random server one day and every other fucking player was a medic, grinding achievements. So I left, and for one reason or another never went back. Somehow in that time online multiplayer stopped being fun to me, maybe once there was money to be made in pro gaming and YouTube skill videos everyone started taking it too seriously. Online gaming in public servers always feels a touch too sweaty for me these days, and yet I kept up with every update Team Fortress 2 received over the years. Long after the period spent playing it was easily dwarfed by the period spent not playing it. I enjoyed reading about the changes and new weapons, cause having once played it I was intimately familiar with and admiring of the game's design and could go, hmm yes that does sound like it would be optimal for a specific playstyle. But it was more than that, each of the nine classes feels so incredibly richly characterised, in spite or possibly because of them all being deliberately exaggerated archetypes, that it's just a joy to see them, even out of context. It was a savvy move on Valve's part to release Source Filmmaker. As I said in my post-punk video, amateur animators have put the cast of Team Fortress through every indignity you can imagine on YouTube. YouTube, and I eat that shit up. There's something about the exaggerated diversity of the characters that make them perfect dress-up dollies for puppet shows. I love the demented creativity with which the existing beautifully voiced dialogue is cut up and recontextualized to suit any situation. As a player my favourite class was the medic, as a non-player it's the sniper, cause he's Australian and looks a bit like Hunter S. Thompson. Also his voice actor is married to the lady who voices the announcer in Team Fortress 2 and I just think that's really cute. Guilty Gear if the Sweaties were ever to found their own nation, one-on-one -on -one fighting games would be the fucking capital city. I think only MOBAs could possibly compete for the title of sweatiest user base. Watching high-level fighting game competitions scares the shit out of me, it's like the usual third-person combat principle of watching for tells and reacting accordingly, but on a time scale of nanoseconds. I'm fascinated by fighting games, but I know it's far too late to get into playing them, one can only get good at so many things in life, and all that guitar hero in my mid-twenties fucked my wrists up. But I appreciate fighting games as an exercise in pure visual character characterization, the way they have to sell you on a character purely through the way they look and the way they move. I keep up with every new well-known character from pop culture that gets added to Mortal Kombat, and make sure to watch the compilation videos of all the possible pre-fight dialogue each combination of characters can have, often with a jobbing voice actor trying very bravely to imitate the voice of the character's very famous actor. Look, I'm sorry every voice actor who isn't Mark Hamill, you just can't pull off the Joker. Grudging props to whoever voiced the Joker in Suicide Squad for not even fucking trying I suppose. But far and away my favourite fighting game series, to watch clips of is Guilty Gear. Not only have I never played Guilty Gear and have no intention to, I also know nothing about the story, characters or unique gameplay features, and that is an ignorance I deliberately cultivate. Watching random gameplay from Guilty Gear is something I find very hypnotic. The animation's gorgeous and the character design is wonderfully distinct without being overly detailed. The introduction and exit animations are very stylish as well as the instant kill moves, all of which I've watched in YouTube compilations. I particularly enjoy the instant kill move of that one innocent angelic girl character, 
where she just barely misses an attack that creates a gigantic mushroom cloud in the distance, whereupon the opponent immediately bricks their pants and surrenders. But I worry that acquiring context for any of it would in some way lessen the appeal. I've spoken before about my love of post-punk surreal humour, where things just happen for no adequate reason, although I can't imagine there are any coherent reasons why there's a nine-foot-tall doctor with a paper bag on his head. Nevertheless, I caved once and looked up some character backstories on the Guilty Gear wiki, and concluded, to my satisfaction, that I didn't have the first fucking clue what they were banging on about. Dead by Daylight Speaking of adding famous pop culture characters to things, Dead by Daylight is a game I have played precisely once, I think, around when it first came out, before it became the elephant's graveyard for all of horror intellectual property. In the abstract, I like the concept of playing as a slasher movie villain hacking up screaming cheerleaders, but on the one hand, online multiplayer, ugh, no thanks, and even that aside, Friday the 13th The Game did it way better, but I guess we can't have nice things. I don't gel with all the putting people on hooks stuff, feels like that's adding unnecessary extra steps to the process of cheer leader murder. But for some reason, every time the game gets updated with another new playable monster, I feel the need to go to the Dead by Daylight wiki and read up on what this one's gonna be all about. Partly, that's because Dead by Daylight basically licenses every horror IP that returns its phone calls, and I'm a fan of horror. I went through a phase of being obsessed with 80s slashers like Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street, and of course I'm big on Silent Hill. And so it's nice to see Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger and Pyramid Head getting some airtime now their respective franchises are dead to me, whatever Konami does. It's like seeing Elder wild animals in a sanctuary. Yeah, it would be better if they were still young and strong and prowling the jungle, but all glory must pass, and it's nice to look at them in their sterile zoo enclosures and see that they're enjoying their retirement at least. And even Dead by Daylight's original lore I find fun to read about on the wiki as a general horror fan and appreciator of unknowable Lovecraftian shenanigans as a theme. Sort of a horror version of that ultimate video game crossover concept I was talking about a while ago. And I also like watching YouTube video essays about drama within the Dead by Daylight community as it reaffirms my lack of desire to actually play the game. Apparently it's balanced for shit. So let's throw this out to the comments. What are your favourite games that you don't play and have no interest in playing? And maybe after that we could talk about what breakfast foods make the best packing material.